really see television as the new cinema. It's, there, there's, a real, there's a real gap in, uh, like if you go to the movies now, um, there's, there's art house here, uh, and then there's bombastic, you know, superhero stuff up here, uh, and nothing in between. Like all, that, all those cool drama films that we all fell in love with 20 years ago or 10 years ago, they're not in the movies anymore, it's all gone to television, uh, for better or for worse. But I actually think that, you know, like the, the idea of tracking characters over two hours, six hours, 19 hours of Puberty Blues, 68 hours of amazing television in Mad Men, you know, like, there's, it's sort of, it's sort of, uh, there's a new, there's a new desire. And I think the audience, uh, you know, like TV used to be a small screen medium. Now I think it's large again, because I imagine generally people have big TVs these days and they accept more. They, they, they're, they're sorry, expect more. They can't be shit. And they're used to seeing high end television. And I, and that's, I mean, that's the bonus of it going to six hours stuff. Cause you, you can, you can, uh, do that in a way. The, the, the bad thing is uh, that John Edwards would argue is that if you're not doing even, you know, Offsprings or 13 ep longer form series or 40 ep serials, new directors will never get a look in the door because no one's going to take a punt on a new director on a six part episode, on a six, six episode series because you've only got six eps. Uh, whereas if you've got 13, you can try someone out on episode eight. And that's, that's how I, I got my, my first television experience was with Offspring. I, I directed, uh, and I, I, I totally resisted it. I was like, man, it sounds like a comedy. It sounds like romantic comedy. Like, I don't know, like I'd just done my feature, Last Ride, which is definitely not a romantic comedy. Um, and, and, but John Edwards said, um, look, don't, don't, don't fight it. Don't fight the, the need to have fun. Like if there's, that's so, oh, so we're talking about spiking darkness with lightness. Mm -hmm. He, yeah, I mean, through doing Offspring, that's where I really learnt that for the first time. And, I, it, you know, that, there's that saying, uh, like, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down? That's kind of what I try, that's my, everything I do now, that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, that documentary conference I was telling you about when I went, to, uh, when I came up with the story for Cracker Bag, Albert Maisel's, like, the godfather of observational documentary, was doing a master class there. And like that was literally like being at the altar of, of observational filmmakers. And he said something that burned into my ears and in, it's on my heart and th the thing that I'll struggle with forever. He said like what we're doing, what we're all doing in this room, what we're, what we're planning on doing is that we want to we wanna make, we're making entertainment. No matter which way the way you're looking, the only way to make something, watch it, sorry, the only way to get people to watch something is if it's entertaining. But he said there's two very distinct forms of entertainment. There's distraction and there's engagement. And he said 99% of what you see on TV and generally is distraction. And he said what we're interested in, in this room, in the masterclass, and I guess what I've been interested in forever is engagement. And it's, you know, it'll never be popular because people generally want to sit on the couch or go to the movies and forget about who they are. And what I'm interested in is the sort of storytelling that holds a mirror up to the audience and says, this is, this is who we are. This is, I, I want you to see who, I, I want to know who I am. You know, you were saying before, like who, you want to find out who you are as a director. Like, I just want to know who we are as a human, as a human race. Uh, and people find it really confronting. Like Puberty Blues is a fun show, but people found it too full on to watch. Uh, because it is ultimately really confronting, particularly for women. And like you said, like you lived it. And a lot of people just didn't want to live it again. They just don't want to go there. Even on set, one trick I've learned, particularly with TV, which is very fast, fast. Um, uh, oh, actually, I had a really, I had a, we had this amazing uh, military advisor on Gallipoli, who, you know, he's like an ex-captain from the army. And I'm like, you know, like, I'm me, I'm definitely no military dude. <laughs> And, and I said to him at one point, like we're on set, and it was kind of chaotic, and I said, man, you must look at this and just think, what the hell are you guys doing? Like, and he said, you know, it's kind of like the military, what you're doing. He said, we're trained, which is a little bit scary, we're trained, to, it's, better to, what is it, it's better to make a decision that you're 70% sure about than to make none at all. So what I, what I often do 
is that it, like, oh, okay, where are we going to put this? For an example, where are we going to put the camera? Oh, let's put it there. <laughs> I'm 70% sure it's there. But at least everyone's energy is going towards there. They're going to light that, you know, things, just energy is going in that direction. It's really easy, like in the next five minutes when you go, fuck, it's over there, but I really thought it should be here. It's really easy at that point to go, actually, guys, sorry, now it's here. But at least people have had focus and they haven't gone, oh, fuck, what are we doing? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure where to put the camera. Or what. You know, like, so I always find that I'll give as much information as I can and then give, like, as long as people are moving in, in the direction of where you think it might go, it's easier to sort of slide it over in the next five minutes. You know, even just shooting for that, like, that's never happened in Australia. Like, that was the longest single director shoot that's ever happened. <coughs> Uh, and it was, yeah, like there's just points where you just go, like, oh, one person said at one point, because uh, I've made a feature, and there was a point where someone said, just casually walking past, oh, only six weeks to go <laughs> out of 17 weeks. And I went, I was like, far out. I remember, like, oh, that's how long you get to shoot a feature if, you've, if you're lucky, which is what we got. So, and, and, like, to feel as exhausted as I am now and go, oh, let's go shoot a feature. Like it was a real, I don't know, but every single one of those weeks has got millions of decisions. Yeah, yeah. Being directed, right? yeah. Every five seconds, yeah. you're making a decision or something. Yeah, it is full on. But you know, there, there's something that you know, there's that that thing that I've I've really believed. Gallipoli sort of has prepared me, making Gallipoli for, to, prepared me for anything. Uh, but it is simple. It's like how do you win an elephant, one bite at a time, <laughs> and that's that's it. I've really become trusting in process so when you start on something I think everyone expects you to have all the answers and I think as long as you have most of the answers it's like as as you as you start shooting it informs you about what's working what's not and then you can adjust on the way um, and that's I don't know that's the only way I can describe it I, I don't get as I don't get as worried about I used, to get, I used to worry about everything and now I worry about most things. I work with really good writers um, that allow it. If, and generally, say with Puberty Blues, it's, it's pretty loose. And you've got smart actors. Like a lot of actors think they can improvise, most can't. And it sticks out and you hear it and it's like, it's, it's not the voice <laughs> of the show. Um, but sometimes, particularly when you're writing fast and you're shooting fast, you'll get to rehearse a scene and yes, it just doesn't work. And we need to swap these lines around. We need to change something. And generally, you can change it on the spot. But out of respect for writers, I'll generally call them and say, look, I'm changing this. Or I want to, like, this is what needs to happen. Are you happy with that? 90% of the time, they say, yeah, it's fine. That's cool. Other times, they go, no, you can't change that line because, you know, for them, it's the scene. It'd be like saying, do you really need the shot of the fingers with fireworks behind it? Like, yeah, you do. I totally need that shot. So for them, they'll be attached to lines. And you go, okay, well, if you want to keep that, we're going to have to change something in the lead up to that line. And then, and you work it out. But I, I, working closely with writers that you respect and that you, you know, are close friends, there's no problem in changing stuff ever, I found. Yeah, I just thought, I said to them, look, I don't know if you've seen Last Ride, but it's not a romantic comedy. Like, it's just not... I don't, know, I don't know who you think I am. But John said, look, we like you as a filmmaker. We just like you as a, we see good stuff in your work. Uh, Offspring, and this is in the first series, Offspring isn't a dark drama. Don't make it a dark drama. We don't want it to be that. But if it's dramatic, go for it. Like bring your dramatic, uh, your, your dramatic approach to the scenes that are dramatic. But if it's funny, have fun with it. Like have fun. And, I, and that was the first time anyone ever said that to me. And I remember being on set and laughing, not laughing, like I usually have a pretty cool set and it's a lot of laughter on set, but laughing at what we're shooting and having fun on set. And it was a real, it was, I mean, it sounds weird, but it was a revelation. It was like, oh, right, yeah, this, people want to be entertained. You can actually have fun. Because <laughs> it's always been, for me, it's been work and, and medicine. Um, so, yeah, and, and that, that relationship, like saying yes to that, a bit like saying yes to the whiskers job, yeah has led to, you know, that, like, they offered me more Offspring. As much as I love Offspring, and I, I, you know, and I love everyone who makes it, it's not a show that I feel like I can contribute to or that I'm attached to. Uh, they don't want, like, but, so they offered me more. I said no, which I thought was, like, the end. Um, but I got, then John said, oh, do you want to do 
um, we've got this thing called Beaconsfield about mining. Do you want to do that? And it was a standalone telly movie, and I really wanted to do something of my own. So I did that, um, which also has documentary elements in it. And you know, we shot in real mines, and that was such an adventure to do something like that. Everyone's experience is really different as a director, and you can't plan a thing. You can't plan a career as, as a filmmaker because it, it ducks and dives so randomly. Yeah. Yeah. One thing builds on another, always with directing. Yeah, the is what, year, overnight success. That never happens. I think it's 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 saying yes to everything at the beginning and then learning what to say no to yeah. later. Yeah. Because I you know, the more the more you work, you just meet people. Yeah. And they but I, and I think just getting into post houses or getting getting into that back end. That's, that for me was where I realised that I liked making something, whether it was a commercial, television, film, anything. I just, I like putting up a camera and shooting something. Like it's just a really cool process and it's a great way to make a living and I get a lot of creative satisfaction out of it as well. So, it, but it was saying yes to, you know, a Whiskers commercial or like just those things that seem very, at the time they seem perilous. They just think this is a mistake. I should not be doing this. But if you don't say yes, you're not doing anything. So I'd rather make a mistake than, than, no, than, than not have the experience of even making the mistake. Yeah.